Hi, everybody. This is Alan Peterson with uh, Meet the Thriller Author. And in this uh, episode, I have Tony DeWiggins. Tony, how are you? I am good. I am suffering in the heat with a sore, th- uh, raspy throat, so I have to have to apologize for that. Otherwise, good. Yeah, we're not, not used to this heat in, in Northern California, are we? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm a weather wimp, <laughs> big time, but making it, but making it through. Okay, that's good. So, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, please? The basics. I live in Northern California. I'm married. I have two grown daughters. Have the oblig- obligatory cat. Let's see, beyond that, going a little bit deeper, just about me, I guess I would call myself mostly a pragmatic person. I go through my day with a practical problem solving approach. Uh, that is when I don't get riled up about the state of the world, but no worries, I'm not going to wade into that here. <laughs> um, I also have a goofy streak. I love puns. I feel affection for goofy looking animals like pelicans. And they're actually extraordinarily well designed, else they wouldn't have lasted 100 million years. But I'm I'm, I'm quite uh, fond of their their goofy looking appearance and their amazing abilities to fly and dive. I wish, in fact, I wish I lived at the beach (laughs) where I could watch them every morning. Instead, I live here uh, having a view of Silicon Valley. In fact, I like to start my day with a little ritual. I look out at the world. I get a cup of coffee, I go out on the deck, and I say, hey, world, it's nice to be here. And then I pose a question. I picked this up at some point, and I decided it was a good idea. Uh, It's actually a rather daunting question. I'm out there with my coffee. I look at the world, and I ask myself, is this going to be a good day or a bad day? I'm not talking about if it's a beach day or a dentist day. Rather, it's more or less, what can I make of this day? I don't know if that's pragmatic or metaphysical, but, but... that's my little ritual. That sounds like a good way to start the day. I get you right in the main, in the, in the right mind thought. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, and it, I, it doesn't. It doesn't always lead to the best answer. Sometimes, <laughs> you know, this day is going to suck. And it <laughs> but, but mostly, it's it's a good way to get in the right mindset. Yeah. And so, how long have you been writing? Oh gosh, more years than I can count. I I, I started way way back when I wrote uh, some magazine stuff, you know, articles, short stories. Then I ended up writing for a publishing company. I, long story short, I ended up being brought in to write a high school history textbook. You know, working with working with some uh, specialists, some experts in the field. But I did the actual writing, which was just so much fun. I found out I loved research. I loved history, which is a story. From there, after I, I kind of finished that doing that, I, I wrote not just the history textbook. I ended up writing bits and pieces for earth science textbooks, actually. That kind of turned my head somewhat to geology. I write a forensic geology series for the listeners who don't already do, who don't know. And then, let's see, I, I went from the textbook stuff to deciding I wanted to be a novelist and started writing long-form fiction, and here I am. Is the reason you started to write thrillers is that uh, were you a fan of thrillers as a reader, or why, why exactly did you start writing thrillers? Yeah, you've definitely been a fan ever since I was a kid. You know, Nancy Drew, all that kind of stuff. But you know, I'm going to have to expand the definition for me uh, mm-hmm. beyond just thrillers. I actually, my stuff is, I guess I'd call it mystery thrillers. My stuff is a mashup of forensic mystery and thriller and outdoor adventure. I guess if I break it down, the mystery part appeals to my interest in problem solving. I have to be challenged and surprised and confused mm-hmm. as long as I can figure out the answer, the mystery. And then the thriller it is really cool because I, I think thrillers bring us to extremes where choices lead to life and death consequences, some, a wild ride, but some really serious stuff sometimes, a cool way to play out moral choices. See, the outdoor adventure part I really like because partly because I like to spend a lot of time doing outdoorsy things. It's fun, and there are a lot of ways to get in trouble. (laughs) And I have to admit here to a guilty pleasure watching this old TV show called Man vs. Wild. This guy, Bear Grylls, gets himself into really gnarly situations in the wild, and he has to survive. And, you know, I'm there vicariously, but I'm there. (laughs) It looks like there's a new show now where they just drop people out in the wilderness. I don't know how true it is, but I saw a commercial. It sounds very interesting. They basically really drop them off with nothing. It's like extreme survivor. I'll have to check that one out because I think I've seen all the men versus wilds. So now your your series is so unique with the forensic geology uh, angle. How how did all that come to be and We'll give you the idea to, hey, say, hey, I'm able to write about this. I kind of told you about how, you know, my writing mm-hmm. evolved. I also, ever since I was a kid, I was, I was, I'd like to pick up 
pick up rocks that looked interesting, kind of like a bird with shiny things. Ooh, that's <laughs> interesting. I'm going to pick that up. And as, as I ended up ending up writing about some earth science subjects, I got more interested in the in the actual science of it, the geology. When I was trying to think of, of you know, what would be a great subject for, for a book, for a novel, I thought, well, yeah, I'm interested in geology, but, you know, I don't know how to do that. I came across a textbook about forensic geology, and I had never heard of it. I thought, this is so cool. This, you know, these are scientists. They're, they're using earth material at crime scenes or scenes of, you know, calamities, and they're actually, you know, kind of like following that to solve, solve the crimes. So I thought that sounded interesting. And so I, then I had that, and so for the first book, even though Quicksilver is currently the first in my series, Bad Water was the first I wrote, and I came to that, I was looking through some of my old uh, photos of just various outdoor trips, and I came across photos of Death Valley, and I thought, well, there's a place to set a story. Mm. So I did some research, and I found out that on the perimeter of that national park, there was once a radioactive waste dump. And so I thought, okay, you know, now I've got my theme, my place, and that kicked it off. So it's actually inspired on real, on kind of real things out there that that actually happened. Yeah, I, I do that a lot. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I go through newspapers or stories I hear, like, you know, like the bird with the shiny thing, and I pluck things out and put them in my file. But I do use real life experiences, um, like for bad water, for instance, here's a little anecdote. I was hiking in the Slot Canyon and uh, by myself in a very narrow, twisty canyon in Death Valley, and I heard this huge roar coming from up canyon. And, of course, my first thought was flash flood because that's a danger there. I'm looking at the sky, and it's blue, but I'm still kind of thinking, you know, it could be raining further further up in the watershed. And I'm, I'm beginning to think, what should I do? There's no place to run. And then I, the roar gets louder, and... I look up canyon and around the corner comes this amazing black whirlwind. I mean, it was this little whirlwind, dust and pebbles, and it looked and acted like it was alive. It just came whipping around that corner. It came straight toward me. I plastered myself against the canyon wall thinking, oh my gosh, it almost touched me, but it didn't. It just zipped by me, and then it came, went down to the end of the section I was in, took the next turn in the canyon without even a pause, and off it went. Better believe I used that in bad water. So, you know, and then for my volcano book, I used to ski in that area as a kid. But Mammoth, Mammoth, uh, Mammoth Lakes is the name of the town. And it turned out, I didn't know it at the time, you know, I was skiing and soaking in, the, in a hot springs, and it, it was part of a huge volcanic caldera. And then when I, when I learned that, I remembered my, you know, my experience. So I thought, okay, you know, here's another great story. Yeah, and now and now with skeleton C, it was kind of interesting because when it, when it first came out, I was like, oh, I, I kind of didn't put the two two of geology and and the ocean, but duh, yeah. there's so many rocks down there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, there's a lot there's a lot of rock down there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the, yeah, the geologists do have to do that. Although I had to learn, I had to learn a lot of marine science to to write that one, which is one of the one of the great things I love about about the books I'm doing, and one of the things that makes me so slow is is I get interested in a subject, and then I have to research it, and I have to learn the science, and I'm somewhat a, some, somewhat persnickety about trying to get that right. So then I have to search out an expert in whatever I'm writing about, you know, learn and 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 so on. But it's so interesting. And who are some of your favorite thriller authors, and and have they influenced your writing today? So the usual suspects are like mm-hmm. Preston and Child. You know, they write these exciting kind of science-based thrillers. Jeffrey Deaver writes forensic mysteries. You know, I love I love his attention to the science, the mystery, and the storytelling that goes with that science. You know, my all-time favorite mystery thriller writer, who is just a spectacular writer, is James Lee Burke. Oh, yeah. He's, he's, his, you know, his stories are just incredible. His settings are so alive. You're there. His characters are alive, sometimes scarily so. The crimes at the heart of his stories are so unsettling, and they write, raise the kind of questions that really stick with the reader. I am always in awe of what he does. If I, could, if I could even come in the neighborhood of getting a story to work the way he does, I would be absolutely happy. 
Yeah, he's amazing, and and his name has come up a few times with the other uh, podcast. So he's uh, very influential to a lot of us. Oh, interesting. Okay, I, I yeah. Cool. Well, yeah. I mean, he is. He's he's a giant. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of funny too. Even like you mentioned, like we're going way back when uh, growing up. You mentioned Nancy Drew. They, they those have come up too. Like and same thing with me. I was the Hardy Boys, you know. And it's just, oh yeah, it's so interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I read some Hardy Boys too. I wasn't just you know reading the females; I was reading the males. Yeah, too. no, I wrote I read Nancy Drew too because I had a sister, so you know. Ah, uh, there you go. She had the Nancy Drews. I had, and then my brother had the. I'm the youngest, so you know I got all the hand me downs, and he, my yeah. brother had the Hardy the Hardy Boys. So I read them both. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, uh, I guess they, I guess they kicked us all off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's so interesting. Uh, do you still find time to to read thrillers, or do you try not to? Do you worry that you're if, if you're reading thrillers, it's gonna influence your writing or anything like that no no no. I, I don't worry about it too much because i don't know why i don't worry about it. i just don't yeah i do i mean it's it's yeah i like i like to read the kind of stuff i like to write so i mm -hmm. i guess my you know i read a lot of mystery thrillers i also like literary fiction you know i'm i'm i will read that i like biographies i don't read romance you know just just it's just not my cup of tea but yeah i guess mysteries and thrillers and and literary and then nonfiction, especially when it pertains to the story I'm trying to write. In fact, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just starting to read this book called Down the Great Unknown. It's about uh, John Wesley Powell's exploratory trip through the Grand Canyon back in the uh, 1800s. He was the first white dude to explore the Grand Canyon. Fascinating stuff. So uh, that's one of the that's one of the places I'm considering sending my geologists in the next book. Fascinating story, yeah. It's great stuff. I have to check that out. I like this. I like those type of uh, uh, stories, uh, especially you know those those explorers way back when. I mean, that's a yeah. some pretty gutsy people. Yeah, well, this is. I mean, this is a great. I mean, it's a great story of, of adventure of of you know somewhat crazy people. <laughs> <Do we Yeah. laughs> but the characters are you know indelible. I wish I could make up characters like that. Yeah. <laughs> So now you mentioned, um, you know, like especially with the, the the focus on forensics in your in your books. I mean, do you watch like TV shows like CSI, or do you not prefer to watch those? I wonder, I wonder if pop culture and TV do they influence your writing and and yeah. your novels? You know, I used to watch CSI, and and I have to I have to say here, and, and apologies to all CSI fans. <laughs> It just it, it well I guess because I have done so much research and worked you know worked with and, and talked to a lot of people in a real forensic situation, CSI it just seems so kind of silly sometimes. Mm -hmm. I watched the show for a while and then I just didn't anymore. Yeah. Every once in a while I'll see a, a show with with a forensic angle that I think really works. But you know you asked about what TV shows would influence my writing, and one thing that just did that blew me away was Breaking Bad. Mm -hmm. I didn't watch it when it was, you know, first being broadcast. Watched it on Netflix, binge watched. And and I don't know if you've seen it. Did you have yes, you seen I it? love Breaking Bad, yep. I mean it just is it just blew me away. I think it's one of the best things I've ever seen on T V. It's a tutorial on character development, on reversals, on the old you reap what you sow lesson. It mm -hmm. it uh I don't. I, I wish I could say that that my stuff comes up to that level, but I, I certainly, aside from watching it just wrapped, I, I I've learned a little bit. So uh, I would like that to be an influence on my stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's inc that's an incredible show. And, and yeah, like what you mentioned with CSI, I think they even have. I've read that they call it the CSI factor, where jurors now expect things yeah. like the TV show, and it's like, no, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> so. <laughs> Exactly. I think that maybe that's one of the things that bugged me about it. Yeah, it's just too I mean? like, uh, yeah, too yeah. over the top. Yeah, and and again, I mean, I'm all for drama. You got to do. I mean, with, with fiction, yeah. you got to do the drama. Yeah, I mean, you, you don't want to make something dry and boring. And well, this, you know, this takes 18 weeks to just to discover <laughs> this. Well, then okay, you do a time jump and you say, okay, 18, 18 weeks later, I figured out what happened. Anyway, I, yeah, I, I I have a. Several geologists, both forensic and in other fields, who who are kind enough to vet my work, and boy, they just you know they shake their fingers at me when I get it wrong. <laughs> so <laughs> That's awesome. I try I, I try very hard to get it right. So those experiences of their experiences make it into the, your books and everything. Huh, it's a great question. You know, not no, they haven't actually. I should I should go back to them and say, tell me some stories. <laughs> I guess because. You know, each time when I have come to them, I have come with a story. Mm -hmm. You know, my original, the original one I approached was a forensic geologist, and you know, I, I take it back. Yes, he 
I take it back. Let me go back to him. The, the first one I, I consulted with who showed me around his lab, who was wonderful. And his lab was a, a wonder in itself. And so he told me some stories. I, I asked him, just tell me something about, about what you're doing and, and, and how it works. And he was working a case in which a, a suspect had sand caught in his pant cuffs. He was a suspect in a murder. And then my geologist's job was to find out if the sand actually came from the site of the murder or came from some other beach. He already hit. So the first thing he had to do was to find out if it was beach sand or inland desert dune sand and that sort of thing, which is kind of cool in and of itself. And so, you know, he, he long story short, he showed me all the equipment he used to examine this, these grains of sand and how he, in, in the end, was able to determine that yes indeed the suspect was at the site and, and they nailed the sucker. And then he and then he went on to quote William uh, I think it's William Blake's poetry, you know, to see a world in a grain of sand. I love this geologist who's all kind of hard 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 nosed and you know I'm, you know I'm here's how I sound how I solved this and you know nailed him and then he's got this romantic sort of romantic <laughs> Yeah, that he works his philosophy. Yeah, so I gave I gave my my one of my protagonists, Walter. You know, I've had this. He's kind of the mentor of my of my geology team. I gave him a love of poetry. In fact, I used that quote in in Seal and Sea about uh, to see a world in a grain of sand, which which you actually can. Yeah, that's amazing. That's like right out of that uh, old TV show, The Forensic Files. Like this is before all CSI. I don't know if you have ever seen that yeah. show, but they that sounds like that would have been right for that TV, for that uh, documentary. <laughs> Yes, absolutely, absolutely. When you start to write, I know it's hard to describe a typical writing day. What's a, a writing day for you? What's it? What's it like? Well, let's see. I start with I start with that that little. Usually, I'll start with that little ritual I described. I'll get my mm-hmm. coffee and go out in the deck and say, "Hey, world!" and pose my question. Then I'll I'll have my coffee, read the newspaper. I read the newspaper for two reasons. It's habit. I like to get just an overview of what's going on. You know, if I had the time and 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 was willing, I would have, I'd subscribe to the New York Times, but I subscribed instead to the local rag. Anyway, in any case, I still get a mix of stories that I don't get online. Online, I, I have my news feed more tailored. Mm-hmm. But this time, I, in this case, I get more of a, a variety of things, things I wouldn't have thought to sought out, thought to seek out. So I'll read the paper, have breakfast, and then and diddle around a bit, then go to work. I, I have a bad habit of getting on the net and checking various things first. I should probably leave that until the afternoon. I'm trying to break that bad habit. If I have any social networking kind of chores, things I need to do, you know, reply to emails or, or line up promotions or that sort of thing, I'll do that. And I will, if, I, if research needs to be done, I'll do that. Then more writing and then more coffee. And then I'll, I'll get up and walk around. And by the afternoon, I'm, I'm uh, usually ready for a break. Most days, I will take a very long walk. I live in the foothills, so I have not, lots of nice, challenging hills, so I can do a lot of up and down, get some exercise. I, I call them plot walks because more often than not, I, I set off with a, you know, a question in my mind about how am I going to get my people into this kind of trouble or out of this kind of trouble or what happens next. What does someone have like a little record, a recorder or a piece of a pad of paper in case you get a, a great idea when you're out in the foothills? Yeah, I don't bring a recorder. I probably should. I bring paper, paper and pencil. Oh, cool. And then um, I'll scribble it down. And then many times I come home and I kind of try to decipher what it was I wrote. <laughs> but um, yeah, yeah. So that's so that's my day. Then I'll come back. And then if I have, if I still have the will and the energy, I'll do some more writing, researching, networking, et cetera, et cetera. And then vegging out. <laughs> <laughs> And where do you usually write? Do you have a specific area that's set aside for writing? I do. I'm fortunate. I have an area of the house that, that's my that's my office with a great big window, and it looks out and onto trees. My love of the outdoors is somewhat satisfied looking out the window. I don't see anything wildly exciting out there except for the occasional squirrel. You know, squirrel. It's nice. It's it's a nice setting. It's conducive to writing. My desk is covered with odds and ends, a lot of rocks, a lot of notes, photos, that sort of thing. So it's, it's, it's not a wildly different I ma- different place. I imagine most writers' places would look more or less like mine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. Yes, yeah, so I'm like I'm the same way too. I, have, I like to open the, the shades and look outside, and then some like kind of like uh, black themselves into you know like they don't want to see the outside world. So it's kind of interesting yeah. the differences of, of, of yeah. the different writers. Yeah, I know. I I've never tried writing like just in a room with no window, so I can't 
compare, but I, I don't like the idea. Yeah. I just I do like having that you know just it, just out of the corner of my eye sometimes just to see the, mm -hmm. the the light and the and the greenery and the the sky etc cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm someone else. I'm someone who does not write to music. I know a lot of people like to do that. I tried once because people kept saying how 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 much it spurred their creativity. I don't know. I find if I turn on music that I like to listen to, I start listening to the music. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah we're the same. I'm I'm the same way. I don't, I can't because then yeah, I'll like oh I used to like I really like that song and oh what were the lyrics? Then I'll be googling the lyrics. Right, <laughs> right. No kidding. So now, do you find that uh, like? In your books, does your own personality uh, or experiences make it into your into your books, or or no? You know, I, I mentioned the you know those experiences in, in, mm -hmm. in the canyon and skiing, and so those sorts of things definitely make it in. Um, as far as my you know, let's see, um, my protagonist, my main protagonist, my POV protagonist is a young woman, um, and so so she's you know she's got I, there are enough similarities between us. That, that I do, I, I give her, let's see, I give her this this need for coffee. She can't start, we can't start the day without it. She loves the outdoors. She's happier in boots or flip-flops and dressy shoes. You know, on the other hand, she's younger, smarter, braver, gets in more trouble than I do. Um, a funny thing, though, you know what's happened is occasionally she starts making her way into my life. I found myself using an adjective Monumentally, I, I used I gave that to, to Cassie. You know, every once in a while she'll she'll describe something as monumentally, whatever, irritating or interesting. Uh, instead of saying very, she'll say that. I don't even know where I came up with it. Just kind of when she came alive, she started saying that. I never used to say it, and now every once in a while <laughs> I'll be saying that. I, you know, it's kind of like, okay, get out of my head. I, I use some real life experiences in my stories. You know, it kind of bleeds back and forth. For instance, in Skeleton Sea, there's a scene where Cassie is kayaking in this area with a lot of jellyfish. Jellyfish play quite a big role in the book. Very, very deadly forms of, of the creatures. I had actually experienced kayaking in this place. So it was a real life place. I was out there alone kayaking and I, I, I Looked around and it was just the 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 whole the water was full of jellyfish. It was just it was overwhelming. I mean I couldn't take a, a stroke without hitting a jellyfish and I didn't want to do that, so I drifted. It was gorgeous. It was a little bit unsettling, and uh, that's one of the things that got me interested in what's going on with that. In any case, so that that led to a, a fictionalized scene of that um, where where bad things actually happen. <laughs> And then, then um, just a couple of weeks ago, I was on vacation again at that place where this where this story is set. I was out there kayaking, and I'm going along, and there's this great big jellyfish. And so my first thought is, how can I use that to promote my book? <laughs> you take a picture? <laughs> I didn't have a camera. Darn. Oh. That would have been great. Yeah, it's just like Cassie. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, she, she's, she's saying, look out, look out. You don't know what's going to happen up ahead. <laughs> There are some wildly lethal jellyfish out there. In fact, this this is a little tidbit that, that's in my book, is that the box jellyfish, who actually is in my book, he's on, I think he's on, on the 10 most deadly creatures list. Oh, wow. Hmm. It's done by one of those suckers, and, you know, you have a good chance of dying or wish, wishing you did. Mm -hmm. So, um Oh, that's fascinating. It's the dangers down there. Is that what kind of drew you to write about the, the about putting your characters in the sea and the in the skeleton sea because of the dangers yeah. down, lurking down there? Yeah, partly. Yeah, you know, again because because I, you know, again because I, I my family um, rents a place at the beach every year. It's sort of a, a family tradition, and so I knew the area very well. Been there mm -hmm. going going there for years. Really liked it. And I was looking for, okay, you know, they've been, I've had my characters in the mountains and the desert in winter, you know, in volcanic eruption, you know, where shall they go next? And I thought, well, take them to the ocean. That's where you're spending a lot of time. You know it. So then, and at first it was that, I think I want to bring them to the ocean. And then I just started doing some reading and remembering my experience with the jellyfish and doing a lot of reading about what's going on there. I, I, I almost always have a environmental slant to my stories, you know, kind of eco thrillers, and I found that there's a lot of very scary things going on with the with the oceans these days, and so it all kind of came together, and I I just uh, I, I put them into a lot of trouble down there. 
<laughs> one of my readers, one of my readers in England wrote to me. He just finished Skeleton Sea, and I guess he, I guess he lives somewhere near the coast. And he said, he said, that's it. I'm moving inland, and I'm not. I'm never getting in a bathtub again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So you're like Steven Spielberg, scaring people from sh the ocean, from sharks and stuff. <laughs> right. You mentioned that your research, is that something that you find challenging when you're bringing your, your novels to life? Yes, it, it is. It is. It's, it's challenging in the, I do, I think I, I think I have to do, but in, in any case, I do a lot of research it's kind of like an iceberg, you know, the tip of the iceberg is all that shows. There's a whole lot underneath, and you know, what makes it into the books is, is, a, t is a tip. I, I'm trying, you know, I try very much not to do these core dump uh, science lessons for the reader. I don't want to sit there and lecture anybody. Mm -hmm. I just try to, you know, make it come out as part of the uh, part of the story, the drama. But to get to that point where I have this, you know, this dramatic scene where, this particular bit of science or information comes into play, I have to do a lot of research. So it's challenge, you know, the challenging part, because I love research, it's so much fun. The challenging part really is, is, is deciding how much I can dump of this long explanation of why this is happening and still have it be understandable, believable to a science reader and interesting to a totally uh, you know, non-science reader. In other words, I, I, I would just like the general reader who, who is looking for a good read not to get bogged down. Hmm. So that's, that's the hardest part for me on the research. That and, 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 you know, and, and having all this stuff I didn't use and, and this overwhelming desire to put it all together. Maybe my next book should use radiation poisoning, mercury poisoning, <laughs> a volcanic eruption, um, you know, jellyfish. <laughs> you know, have it all together, except the book would explode. Yeah, well, you could have like a, yeah, like a little, maybe like a little novella or something on, on the stuff that you had to cut out. <laughs> yeah, that's not a good idea. Yeah, hey, there we go. Outtakes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I thought about that once too, because uh, the editor had me removed, well, she suggested, and it made sense in the end, so I, did, I, I went with her suggestion. But to maybe take out this scene that I really liked, but didn't really, it, it was, wasn't was part of the story. Yeah. Uh, so I'm like, man, I don't want to waste that. So someday I'll do something with it. No kidding. Oh, I've done that many, many times. And not just because, not just the question of, you know, some sci science-y bit, but just, you know, a scene, you know, just a scene mm -hmm. that I fall in love with. Like, oh, this is so great. And then an editor or beta reader says, you know, it does not advance the story. You know, and, and you know, after much Whining and yelling and screaming, I yank it out. Yeah, it's incredible how we become, become attached to scenes and words, huh? <laughs> yeah, well, there's that old piece of writer's advice. I don't know who said it, but, you know, it's called Kill Your Darlings. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about uh, your work in progress right now. Are you, is it the Forensic Geology series? Yes, it is. It'll be the next in the series. As I said, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm toying with this Grand Canyon thing. I, I actually took a rafting trip down the Colorado through the Grand Canyon. It was uh, terrific. It was so cool. Um, and and uh, so I'm thinking about sending them there. Uh, another thing, another uh, sort of a bucket list, a bucket list trip I took last summer to Machu Picchu. Ooh, nice. And I thought, oh, there's another cool place. I, you know, I might send them. Oh, yeah, but I'm in a different country, huh? Um, yeah, you know, all my stuff has been set in California so far. Of course, even, you know, even going to the Grand Canyon, I'm going, I'm I'm leaving my home state. That's okay. <laughs> then again, I might just stay, you know, stick close to home and do another big one up in San Francisco. I'll warn you before I shake up your hometown. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It keeps getting destroyed by the rock and uh, the apes, and it's like, holy cow. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I'm currently um, just in the process. I'm just sifting through ideas and, and throwing out all sorts of improbable scenarios and seeing what resonates. Well, so that's like a real early preview here. So listeners, you heard it here first, then in the, grand, yeah. in, in the story ends up in the Grand Canyon or in Peru, Machu Picchu. Exactly, exactly. You know, I can pretty much guarantee it, it will be someplace with a lot of outdoorsy stuff that has has a lot of possibilities for things to go wrong. <laughs> so now if the readers are looking for you, could you give us like your website and if you're on Facebook and Twitter and all that good stuff? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see, my website, TonyDwiggins.com. You know, I, it's just t type in TonyDwiggins, all one word, dot com. 
And my Facebook page is Tony Dwiggins Books, all one word, at Facebook.com. That's pretty much where I hang out at Facebook. My website is more or less static. I don't I don't have a blog. I do kind of mini blogging at Facebook. I you know, I just do little occasional posts and, and interact with readers, which is great fun. I really like that. I need to do it more often. Yeah, you mentioned like the reader from England who contacted you. Is that the is that a, a lot of fun for you to interacting with the readers? Yes, that too. Now, actually, he, he contacted me through my web mail, and I, I get a lot of um, contact that way. You know, I, I have a contact form on, on my website, and I love that. That is so much fun. I've, I've just, I've got, I've made friends that way. I've gotten a lot of just story critiques and suggestions that way. Learn about people, people from, from many different walks of life, different areas in the world. I, I really do enjoy that. Yeah, I mean, both, um, you know, both getting getting mail from people and then just people kind of showing up at Facebook, liking the page and, and joining in. And that's great fun, too. And I will have for the listeners, I will have links to your website and all that good stuff on the if, if they listen to this on my website, they can there'll be links somewhere in there. OK, cool. <laughs> it's kind of weird because I can't see it right now, but. Yeah, probably, probably below. For <laughs> there'll be links right. in there. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it basically, you know, if they if they can if they can spell my bizarre name, then they can find me. Yeah. Which, there you go. And that's Tony T O N I. Yes, T O N I and D W I G G I N S. Anything else that you uh, would like uh, to say to our listeners before we conclude well, the show? I just would say, you know, there are a lot of things I love about my job. I love. Love the research, love getting into the stories, you know, that's it's just so involving. I love it when they when the stories and the characters come alive. I love working in my pajamas, <laughs> which I did. <laughs> but but the, the number one best thing about about what I'm doing is connecting with readers. You know, sharing what I'm doing with people and having them bring their own experience and expectations and reactions to something that I have created. And it just gives it a new dimension. I mean, that that just floors me. Every time, oh, really? Every time I hear from a reader, you know, that 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 X X Y Z they they liked or they responded to or just who I really liked it, you know, I'm just kind of like, wow, <laughs> thank you. That's something that's really changed a lot, probably since when you first published, right? Because before it used to be very. I mean, I guess it would have to write a letter back in the day. Yeah, yeah. I think I think the change, you know, now that everything is is so so easy and so prompt i mean you know click 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 and you're connecting with somebody it's it does make it very easy you know i, I think that's a good thing you know i think it becomes yeah. much more of an interactive experience because you know as you know alan we writers are sitting here by ourselves you know doing our thing and you know you, you don't often or i don't come across people who want to talk to talk about it in real life i bored my family to tears talking about <laughs> it meeting people who have actually read the books or are interested in doing so is a real privilege. Thank you very much, uh, Tony, for taking time to be on the show. I really appreciate it. It was very interesting uh, talking to you about your thrillers and the world that you've created. Well, thank you, Alan. It was great fun. And um, thanks for having me. And back to work, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> back to work. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to this episode of Meet the Thriller Author. You can visit our site at get.thrillingreads.com forward slash podcast for more information on our podcasts. And you can also subscribe to this podcast uh, on your favorite podcatcher like iTunes, the most popular one, of course. Uh, Just search for Meet the Thriller Author and you'll find me there. And I'm also on Facebook at uh, facebook.com forward slash meet thriller author love to hear from you love to hear comments and your feedbacks on the shows and i'll have a new podcast a new interview with a thriller author uh, they'll be posting them every tuesday so stay tuned for that and don't forget to subscribe and please visit my author website at ellenpeterson.com